my name is Andrew and I'm going to be showing you a series of videos on businesses and strategy as well as value chains and what the objective is for these videos is to look at businesses that are potentially growing uh, scaling up so they're moving out of the entrepreneurial uh, frame they maybe have a product line that's running they want to expand the product line they expand uh, skill sets getting new employees building functional groups because now the many hat wearing is not working anymore there's enough work that you can bring in specific skill sets within the business so this series is looking at understanding the value chain understanding uh, how we can start building out processes, putting some measures around processes, uh, not to say, okay, well, we need a lot of processes, it's, it's, it's going to be, well, there's going to be too much stuff, we, we can't worry about that, uh, it's going to be overburdensome, we're going to become big and lethargic, not be able to move, not be able to pivot. Uh, this is, what I'm looking at is, uh, to put that objection down, is we're looking at building a more agile framework within the business. I find that a lot of businesses that say we don't need a lot of processes suffer because they don't understand exactly what it is they're doing. They're always reinventing every time they get stressed and there's a certain event, maybe you have a large number of customer complaints or you have recalls or defects within the product, then those stresses end up spinning off many different processes within the functional areas and nothing comes together well and it always feels like it's a struggle just to get through so I'm going to put some tools into your toolbox to help you understand uh, strategies and processes and building better capabilities within your business so to start what I want to look at is the capability maturity model CMM capability, maturity, model. And essentially what it is, it's, it's five steps. So one, two, erase that, three, four, five. Starting from initial, So a business, when you first start a business, just say you have a small group of founders, you wear many hats, and you're getting a product out. So first thing you want to do as a business is let's get that product out. Now you don't necessarily start at initial if your founders have built the playbook, so to speak, and they have the processes laid out and, and frameworks laid out on how they want the business to operate then you might even be at a higher level than just one. But typically what happens is at level one is initial, it's chaotic. So a lot of the processes are undocumented. Uh, functional areas tend to do their own thing. Uh, communication is low, so low communication. There's a lot of reinventing of the wheel every time something happens. So it's not a good place to be in if you want to get some sort of consistency. Think of a restaurant. I go to the restaurant. One day you have a meal. You say, okay, that's, that's a four out of five star meal. It could be better, but it was really good. Then you go a week later and it's the same meal. But you feel it's a two out of five star meal. You're wondering what happened. The sauce wasn't as good. Uh, the, the, the food overall was undercooked uh, and in that, in that particular case is they didn't have a consistent method or maybe they're not building it to the recipe uh, that they always built against and even if the recipe was written down maybe they have a new cook and the new cook didn't follow that particular recipe so that's an example of initial then we move into repeatable And characteristic of a business in, or an organization in repeatable 
is there, there may be some processes, so we say functional, functional processes are in place in the functional area. So if I give an example of a business, let's say I have a business, okay, uh, well, I'll put this in a value chain. So a customer is going to receive a product and within our process, our value chain process, we have sales. Sales is going to take the order, then it goes into manufacturing, then it goes into fulfillment, you know, and support. Okay, fulfillment gets it up to the customer. So each of these areas within the business may have some processes established. But when we're in at this level, level two, is they may not be integrated. They're still compartmentalized. Compartmentalization is not a good place to be. We want the communication so that we're not wasting. So if we're compartmentalized, you might be seeing uh, symptoms of waste, symptoms of miscommunication, stress among employees. Uh, they don't have that harmonious feel. It's always this team has done that, this team has done that, they don't play well together, and frustration ensues. So what we want to do is get to, to a point where we're bringing them all together and moving things seamlessly across the value chain so that the customer at the end of the day has a good service and great experience. So in our level two, we have functional processes within these areas I was mentioning, they're, they're not quite optimized. So if sales, for example, at the last quarter, so final, or let's, let's say the last week of the month. So final week. Final week, we're going to give them a 25% inc increase on commissions just to get the sales through. So 25% commissions up. Now, if the goal of the manufacturing is well, we need to maintain a consistent level of production. And if sales says we're going to give a 25% commission for orders at the end of the week, well, a salesperson is going to sit on the orders until the end of the week, then push them through to get the 25% increase in commission. Now the manufacturing is going to see this massive spike towards the end of the month. That's going to throw their averages off. And all of a sudden in fulfillment, they get a backlog. So that backlog then comes across a fulfillment. They see a spike. So sales said, oh, Mr. Customer, you're going to be getting your order within one week. Now all of a sudden there's a bottleneck in manufacturing that's slowing things down. And fulfillment can't move the packages as fast. So customer gets it within two to three weeks. So now they call in and they complain. So when they complain, we may have uh, we may give them some sort of compensation within sales. So now we get this cycle happening and we want to break that down. So that moves us into defined, level three, defined. Okay, our, our processes are now documented. And not only are they documented, we may have some degree of uh, integration of those processes. So now these areas of the businesses, business are talking to each other and they're rectifying the problems to build a better experience for the customer. That right now we got that in place, we have our as is, well how do we get to a point where we can manage it? Which is level four. And that's not to say it hasn't been managed at levels one, two, and three. Perhaps they are, but now we're getting into a higher level portfolio where we can take a look at, okay, these numbers that I was giving you with this 25% commission, we're now trying something. We can try this. And if this is causing problems downstream within the business, we are getting that information in. It may be coming into some sort of portfolio office Or if you have the, your senior vice presidents on the round table, then these numbers, now that we have measures, so I'll call that measures and metrics, okay, 
measures and metrics are now in place so that we can determine that as we make these changes within the processes in the business, we will see something change with the metrics. We can then say, you know, that's not working out. These metrics are tied to a higher level strategy, and that's what I'll get to in future videos. So now we have a where we want to go strategy set up. We know what we want to do, where we want to go. We can now define our processes and capabilities when we're at this level of managed business. We can do the process of change to get those processes implemented into the business. Then we can measure the effect that they're having. Are we getting the objectives that we set on our strategy achieved through this new process of change? So back when we thought, okay, there's a lot of process involved here. It's going to be too much headache. Well, what we're looking at now is now that we know what's going on with the business, we are getting the measures coming in. We can make better decisions based on this information coming in. That's essentially what businesses are. are they're decision factories, especially if you're in knowledge industry, uh, building computer programs or managing information then your processes become very critical. You have to make sure that they are providing the value, uh, they are providing the, the, um, the results that we need that align to our strategy. Last is optimizing. Okay, Optimizing, now we're at this level, we have our measures in place, now we can do continual improvement. We can build the continual improvement. We can build programs of change. We know the resourcing that we need. When we have a change coming in, uh, perhaps we have a new strategy, we have a, a, an ideal state that we want to reach. We can now input that into the business and simulate what the results may be for that business and deploy the change out into the business measure it, get that feedback um, into the, the leadership team, and then they can make the decisions whether, yes, this change is good, or no, we need to pull back a bit on this change, because there's always this performance is, is being managed and measured. So that's the capability maturity model, kind of in a nutshell. Uh, with this, just in, in closing, you're not, typically you're not gonna be able to jump from one step to uh, a, a step that's you know, twice removed. You have to go step by step. It's very rare that you can move up through these uh, from one point up to a five. That's not going to happen. This takes time. Uh, it takes uh, culture improvements because culture, as the, the saying goes, culture tears apart strategy. It eats it up for breakfast. So we have to make sure that when we're going through a process or a a portfolio of change that culturally the business is ready we got the buy-in necessary to do that and this may take to go from just say a three to a four to change the mindset of managers you're no longer managing you are now looking at numbers and making sure that the numbers work rather than uh, maybe change yes you'll have to change behaviors if the behaviors are not aligned but it's more of your managers are now getting uh, incentivized based on making sure that the measures are calculated properly or collected properly, uh, that we're getting the true measures, and that when things go awry, that we can bring it back and say, okay, is it just a training? Or what is it that went wrong? We can then rectify the problem and then uh, work, for, work for solutions from there. So again, I'm Andrew. Uh, this was the capability maturity model and in the next videos we're going to look at uh, strategies and value chains.